thank you, Nabila. Thank you, Nada and the Ulster Call team for um, uh, inviting me. And thank you to Deepak from NYU, who's brought a lot more people, so the body heat has helped the temperature go down, which, was, which is great. Um, <laughs> um, so, uh, my name is uh, Mohammed Somji. I'm from Tanzania, but I've lived in Dubai uh, all my life. Um, I, uh, I'm part of the Ulster Call uh, Avenue family. Uh, we have a space here called Gulf Photo Plus, which is a photography center uh, where, we, where we teach photography. We have a, um, an active art program where we host exhibitions um, and uh, have talks and uh, GPP Slide Fest. And um, I'm also a photographer myself. Um, but today, I want to talk to you, uh, I don't want to talk to you about my work, but rather the work of people um, who we've been very proud to have been involved in uh, production of their projects. And I think, um, you know, this morning's sessions were very interesting, and I think um, some of what I will show is almost, um, uh, you know, counter to the bigness that we talked about, this kind of 10,000 feet view of the impact of urbanism in this Western gaze. And what um, you know, I'd like to uh, uh, share today is um, uh, work that has been done by young uh, emerging photographers. And many of the projects that I'm going to show uh, you today, actually most of them, have been um, the artist's first um, major body of work. And, um, and I think it is a good response to the things that we talked about in this morning, where we are sometimes, um, you know, in academic and artistic discourse, um, almost neglect what's happening on the ground and what's being observed by people who live in these cities. And uh, all the, the artists' work that I will be sharing are from the uh, cities that they um, are documenting. And, um, and I think at Gulf Photo Plus, our mission is to elevate the uh, discourse around photography and in the Gulf, uh, photography has always uh, kind of taken a more decorative and ornamental function. And we try very hard to get people to go beyond that and to really use uh, the medium uh, of photography to um, ask critical questions, to, um, you know, to, to give voice to uh, projects or communities or stories that don't otherwise get heard. And, and I think photography, because of its accessibility and relatability, can do that very well. Um, and so, you know, we've been doing that through, of course, um, helping uh, photographers um, learn the medium and technical skills, but then also giving them a platform through our exhibitions. Um, we have something called the Slide Fest, which we've been doing here in Dubai, um, and also in uh, places like we've taken it to uh, Jeddah with our Jamil and in Bahrain, and hopefully uh, uh, more places. We do Instagram takeovers so that we can really reach a wide amount of people with takeovers and share work that's being done in the region for the region and by people from the region. So um, uh, we're going to start with, um, with the work by a couple, uh, Hussein um, uh, Al Musawi and Maryam Al Arab. They are uh, from Bahrain, and um, this work um, was um, commissioned as part of a project, and they are looking at uh, an area called Jufair in Bahrain. And Jufair is a um, you know has been around for you know centuries as a Shia, uh, mainly a Shia village. And in 1935, the, the British set up a, um, a naval base, actually, to, the, the, the reason was to stop the pirates who were, um, uh, who were reclaiming, let's say, their um, goods that were taken from the East India Company at the time. And, um, and since then, uh, you know, there was a major reclamation project in the 70s, and Jufair has really changed in how it looks and feels in, in, in terms of the people. It's also known as the Las Vegas uh, of Bahrain, so a lot of um, uh, weekend revelers um, from neighboring uh, Saudi Arabia come in, but also people within Bahrain and elsewhere to uh, party and indulge in an active nightlife. And that's created really interesting um, you know, uh, uh, challenges, social dynamics with the local conservative Shia population. And what they've been looking at is, of course, they've been documenting the rise of Jufair from a small fishing village um, to a place that is now quite a metropolis and, and, and uh, with lots of hotels and uh, fast food chains and restaurants and um, a lot of uh, uh, you know, brothels and nightclubs as well. And, um, and you can see that they are trying to um, show the, um, the, the, the changing of the uh, landscape of Jufair. And the reclamation continues, and this is a, a, you know, recent work. And they have been working on this project for a number of years. And what I like about this project is that they've approached it from many different angles to kind of give a, a, you know, um, a multifaceted view. So other than capturing what the uh, city, what the uh, 
Jafer looks like um, from the ground level, from wider views. They've also um, looked at, um, for example, uh, which will come up soon, They're, they've also included abstract videos, they have also have um, oral testimonies, but let's look at this. Then they've also um, um, talked to people who are living in Jufair, either who have been born in Jufair and have lived there for many years, or recent uh, uh, additions to uh, Jufair's community, and they've been collecting oral testimonies. I'm Abdullah Muhammad Hassan Sagur, from the area of Jufair. We lived in the area of our area, in the Bahar. We were in the Bahar, and we were in the Bahar. We were in the Bahar. نصيد السماج على السيف ونقازر وقتنا كله في البحر ونسبح هناك ونطامس وكل شيء والحياة عندنا يعني مش على وقته مرتاحين مع ضم بعض. He talks about how you know uh, he always he's from Jafar, he's born there, and how you know the sea was very important. Now um, uh, uh, you know how fishing and and uh, being close to the sea. Um, was an integral part of his life. I realized that once you're, once you're in a new place, it's not about the heat, it's not about the trees or the traffic, it's about the people you meet and the friends and, and long-term relationships that you create. Um, and because the world is so big, the more people of different cultures that um, you meet, the better all you'll be because um, someone that lives in one town doesn't go anywhere, um, even out the state or out the country. Um, you'll have a, a, a broader knowledge of what's going on in the world, and I think that's, that's important. Um, I just think, th I think that it's difficult to meet local people because there's not, there's not one event, or there's not There's not a, a concentrated place to, to meet locals, um, whether it's basket, I mean, whether it's um, music, uh, a festival, food, um, just something to bring, something that everybody needs to, to come together. I don't feel like Jafar necessarily has that. And um, what this couple have done also is then take this work and take the oral testimonies, including the, the other pictures, and, you know, show this work in Jafar itself and get the community to engage with it. And I think that that's uh, excellent that they're able to, um, you know, that they're taking their work and are making it for the community and for people to kind of, you know, reflect on the issues that they're facing. Within Jufair, they've also worked on a, a sub-project that's part of this larger body of work where they're looking at these societies um, and, and clubs. Um, so the one on the bottom left that you saw at the beginning as well is the Volleyball Association. Then you have the Archaeologist, um, the Archaeology Club. There's a cinema club and there's um, a number of engineers associations. And they're documenting this, one, because some of them are being... Um, uh, demolished, uh, but also because they want to kind of talk about how they have dwindled, both in terms of their uh, uh, engagement by the community, as uh, you know, they were built by the older generation. So, in their own words, they are trying to look at why the youth aren't really um, engaging with them as much as you know their um, their previous generation did. And so that's uh, their work, Mariam and Hussein. And then moving on to the UAE, uh, we have work by Hala Ani. She's Iraqi, and um, she did for her. Um, uh, her university project, which was also showed at the uh, Sharjah Biennial, 
um, uh, the typology of houses in 2011. And she'd always been curious looking at the, um, the, the forms or the architectural forms um, you know, that were uh, taking shape in the villas that were being uh, built um, by local residents in the UAE. And so she, she went on this um, you know, research and documentation phase where she would photograph them and then piece together the similarities and the typologies of the houses, whether they were Tudor-like um, you know, features or more Greek, uh, Greco-Roman like these and put them all together to understand, uh, uh, you know, this, this almost um, uh, yearning for uh, a, a different kind of modernity or, you know, uh, uh, she, she, she uses the word branding a lot, and I think that's interesting uh, uh, in terms of how she is, um, you know, viewing this project. And then, um, staying with the UAE, we have um, the work of Reem Falaknaz, um, whose work we're very proud to have shown at Gulf Photo Plus um, about three years ago. And um, Reem's work started as a, a project that she pitched to the FIND uh, program uh, by uh, NYU Abu Dhabi. And, um, you know, her, uh, her, she had worked in, as a producer for a local TV channel and was tired of the kind of, you know, um, erasure of kind of everyday lives of people in the Emirates and how there was a focus of a certain kind of, um, you know, social um, uh, investigation to people. And so she was always fascinated by the mountains of uh, Ras al-Khaimah and, and she had seen a lot of mountain projects in other parts of the world but not in the Emirates. So she uh, spent two to three years documenting, um, you know, the, the, the landscape and the people of Ras al-Khaimah. And I think this is a project where, you know, she has, uh, she's employed a bit of this artistic lens that we talked about this morning. And I think it's a, a really beautiful, strong body of work and it is um, you know, the mountains are, are uh, almost her portrait subject and how she is, um, you know, portraying them and both the grandeur and the, and the beauty of it and the way she explains it um, in her project is... Um, uh, bear with me a second. The established scene of Sierras is perpetual. It is where an angel spoke to a prophet, where God revealed himself to the mountain and it fell to its knees. The place of perpetual undulation is set in Ras al-Khaimah valleys. This series gives voice to the landscape there, to the mountains. Their voice, of course, is shaped by interactions with the living. The series also looks at the pattern that underlie the spaces they occupy. So um, you have, uh, for example, you know, the people, of course, who have a daily interaction with the mountains, whether it's they're working uh, uh, off the mountains or they are uh, enjoying it or whether they're living off it, um, and the, the kind of patterns that have formed. And they, the mountains have obviously over, uh, uh, undergone a transformation because of the, you know, uh, f physical um, uh, uh, extraction of their materials for use and development in the urban areas, not just in, in the, the, the Emirate, but also in the UAE, but also there are companies that export uh, uh, ceramics from Russell Kaimat to all over the world. And um, I think she's also interested in the people who um, are living in Ras al-Khaimah who are making a life uh, there. And this, for example, you know, shows you the, the physical, actual physical impact of these uh, uh, mountains and how they are being used for development. And the other thing that you will have noticed perhaps in the other pictures is this flag and um, at the, in the, that, that have been kind of painted on the mountains, and I think that is also, uh, uh, you know, um, and she's alluding to this uh, notion that, um, you know, there is this nationalism that we haven't seen in the Emirates in the way that it has kind of manifested itself, and, you know, we have this biggest flag, and we have flag days and things like that, which is something that, you know, I know having lived, grown up here, that wasn't so much the case as it is in the last 10, 15 years. So again, it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful, very um, poignant and, um, you know, deeply personal project. Um, and speaking of personal projects, this one is um, a part of a project that is a project that was um, a part of the Arab documentary photography program that we, uh, again, have worked with in a number of capacities. And I was the juror um, for this particular year's, uh, for 2019's uh, grantees. And when I had seen the, uh, the premise or the statement, I was like, this is really beautiful. Uh, 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 this is a really interesting um, take. 
um, and I think it talks about a lot of different issues. So I'll read um, Roger Mockbill's um, uh, statement. Um, he says, um, <clears throat> Lay your head where my heart used to be, hold the earth above me, lay down on the green grass, remember when you loved me. Don't say goodbye to me, describe the sky to me. And if the sky falls, mark my words, we'll catch mockingbirds. In Tom Waits' song, the deceased lover is asking his graveyard's visitor to simply describe the sky to him, something taken for granted, something out of his reach now, something that he misses. Under the Yerevan Bridge in Burj Hamoud, Lebanon, one of the most densely populated areas in the Middle East, the feeling is the same for a population that is buried alive. This project is a deep dive underneath the alien structure of the Yerevan Highway Bridge in order to shed light on a population that is already suffering from social injustices. For the sake of modernization and urban development, they are now also deprived from their basic right, their basic right of accessing light. By focusing on Burj Hamoud, this project aims at highlighting the dysfunctional urban planning in Lebanon, and some might argue in the Arab world. This documentary work seeks to reveal, through the urban environment, the struggle of the individuals living in these landscapes. And of course, because of the time, I'm only able to show you a limited number of images, but please, I have my uh, email at the end, so please feel free and I can connect you with the photographers or share their bodies of work with you. But um, I think this, is very, um, this work has taken on even more importance given what's been happening in Beirut. And I think, um, you know, Roger has been able to use um, this uh, uh, taking away of a simple thing like light to shed um, light um, on uh, issues like, you know, corruption and um, development and, and this kind of, um, you know, neglect that everyday citizens are facing. Um, and then last is uh, work from Kuwait and uh, the uh, uh, Huda, uh, who has flown here from Kuwait to be here, um, uh, you know, has uh, been working on this for a couple of years and it's going to be exhibited in Kuwait as part of Nukat in a, in a few weeks. And she has been uh, looking at um, the East Ahmadi market and the Al Ahmadi was an area that was founded in 1946. It was actually, it's also been called a, the, a colonial company town because that's where the British um, based its uh, BP and they had developed this area uh, and they had built or they had conceived of a souk area um, that came to be known as East Ahmadi Market. And um, it was uh, uh, remote though as it was from the rest of the cities, Al Ahmadi thrived as a self-contained suburban town, inviting many curious visitors throughout the years. And um, uh, you can hear, for Some example... Some services were originated by the company and were later handed over to the state. These shops were built to cater for demands in the Ahmadi area and form part of a scheme developed by the state and the company in partnership. The shops are leased from the state and are run by private shopkeepers. And initially she was drawn by the calligraphy and the, the, the signage of the, um, these dilapidated stores and 
you know, and then this work grew into a larger body of work. She's documented a lot of these storefronts that have now been demolished, and I think there's still obscurity as to what is going to happen to this market, and uh, um, it's now been taken over by the National Ministry of Let Letters and Cultures. So I hope that with these five projects, you get a sense of what's happening on the ground and work that is really raw and personal by these artists who are doing interesting, important work that comes from a place of passion and a love for their cities, and that's why you know, they're sharing this, and, um, and, and I hope you've got a little bit of a sense of that. Thank you very much.